Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I've got my 1998K1100 LT on the table with some fuel pump issues as you've seen in the title. But let me tell you a bit about this bike. This has been built in 1998 as I've already said. It's got about 83,000 miles on the clock. Been very dependable until now. Had a few issues but uh, nothing, nothing serious. Mechanically she's pretty good. But Cosmetically, she could do with some improvements. With, and I was planning to do a video for a long time on respraying the, the plastics and the fuel tank and the back, which is actually not plastic. Probably the panniers. I've got a top box to repair. I've got new plastics for the uh, covers around the dashboard. So yeah, mainly cosmetic stuff. But I just never found the time for it. And I still don't have the time for it. But I do want to do that at some point because I'm kind of attached to this bike. This used to belong to a very dear friend of mine who sadly passed away. And it just uh, left me quite attached to this bike. I never had in my mind that I'm going to own a K1100 LT at some point. It just wasn't on my bucket list. But now that I have one, and I had this for about close to five years, I think, I'm quite attached to it. It's a good old bike. Don't like saying that too often, but they don't make them like this anymore. Anyway, let's get to work. So the plan was just to replace the fuel pump. Why am I sure the fuel pump's bad? Well, it was fine for a couple of minutes after I started the bike, but as I rode it, it just turned into a very loud and annoying whine. So the fuel pump definitely needs replacing, regardless if that's a problem now or not. But since I'm making this video, I thought it's worth trying to prove that that's the issue. So what's the actual complaint? What's the actual problem? I, I just realized, I don't think I mentioned. Um, the bike does not have any power. It idles fine, it used to idle fine. And I sort of rode it home in first gear at idle, but I can't rev it. As soon as I try to rev it, the bike sort of just splutters and sounds awful. So it's running very lean. Now I can't start it at all. And that's probably because before the bike was warm, the engine was warm when I rode it home. Now it's cold and it can't start. And that's also probably because this is an open loop injection system. So it doesn't have an O2 sensor. It doesn't have any way to tell whether the mixture is lean or rich or whatever. It just runs on a, a preset map. That's also the reason why these bikes still have a choke. Well, it's not really a choke, it just raises the RPM a bit. But it doesn't have any way to tell the, the engine's sort of... But it doesn't have a good way to tell the engine's cold and to enrich in the mixture that way. So anyway, I digress. I took the fuel line off the fuel rail. I, I hooked up a, um, a fuel pressure gauge with a T connection here. And I'm going to measure the pressure the fuel pump puts out. And I expect it to be quite low. That's my expectation. It should be, like, like from memory, I didn't check the manual, but it should be like 35 to 40 PSI. I expect it to be low enough so the bike can start. And I hear what you're saying. You're probably wondering, is it the pressure regulator? And for those of you that don't know, this fuel rail has a pressure regulator on the other side, or it, the, fuel, the regulator is actually a separate unit somewhere on, underneath. And there's a return hose going back to the fuel tank, which is this one right here. So to rule that out, so to rule the fuel pressure regulator as a problem, I've got a pair of um, hose clamps. So in case the fuel pressure is very low, I'll put the, I'll put the hose clamps on it. And um, if that solves it, then we know that's our issue. Potentially, if the fuel pump can build more pressure with this clamp, that's potentially our issue. But if it doesn't make any difference, well, it, it will make a difference regardless if the fuel pump's good or bad, I think. So if the fuel pump's good and we put the hose clamp on, it should go from 35, 40, if the fuel reg is good, to maybe 70-ish, 70 PSI, the fuel pump should be able to put out. In case the fuel pump's back bad, it won't get there. But anyway, I feel I'm babbling on now. It don't make any sense. So let's try it. Thank you. 
Well, I wasn't expecting that to be honest. The pump, the fuel pump does seem to build between 35 and 40 psi roughly of pressure when it's trying to start. It doesn't maintain it, it does drop, so maybe that's a slight issue, but it does have the pressure there, so it should start. And with the return hose clamped, it goes just slightly over 80 psi, so the fuel pump, although noisy, it still seems to be doing a good job. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I'll have to scratch my head a bit and figure out what's going on, but it looks like there may be something else wrong with this bike, apart from the fuel pump. So it seems that from a fuel pump replacement video, which I'm still gonna do, this video turned into a crank no start diagnose video, which I, I started looking around, see what I can, uh, see what the next, which I started looking around, see what the next logical step would be. And what I've done is I, I blocked the air intake, not completely, just put a, a paper towel in it, hold it by hand so it doesn't suck it in and then start the bike while trying to rev it at the same time and it worked that started the bike because what that does is you you rev the bike the bike thinks it needs more fuel so it increases the injector opening time but at the same time you're blocking the intake so you're, you're restricting the air before i couldn't rev it at all it just wouldn't run now because you get more fuel but you don't actually get more air it started up but again i couldn't rev it so the next thing would be to check the sensors. This bike, to my knowledge, well I should know, I had it five years, but does not, does not have an airflow meter, just a temperature sensor. Um, and that's the first thing I unplugged. I was actually suspecting the, the pot, the throttle position sensor, but I didn't touch it yet because I unplugged the temperature sensor, it looked fine, plugged it, tried to start it without it, didn't work, plugged it back in and it's running fine. So you might be onto something. Whether have an intermittent fault, which now it seems to be running fine, or that's something there's something wrong with that sensor, or maybe just a connection to it. But we've got a lead. Unfortunately though, or fortunately, it depends how you look at it, the bike's running fine now, so it's hard to diagnose something that's um, intermittent and it's actually working fine when you're trying to diagnose it, which I'm gonna start it in a bit just to demonstrate, but it's still quite early and the kids are sleeping so I need to be careful with that. So yeah, talking too much again. Because the bike's running fine, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the fuel, fuel pump as the next step and uh, we'll go on from there. So yeah, let's fire it up. You can hear the pump is a bit noisy. I hope you can hear it anyway. So before, with the warm engine, it would start and idle but I couldn't rev it. Now, with the cold engine, before I, before I touched it, it wouldn't start at all. So let's see what happens. Fires right up. Well, look at that. The problem actually returned as I was filming this. So I hope, I think you noticed, it idles but I cannot rev it, it just sounds awful. So I've unplugged the temperature sensor and plugged it back in. And let's give it another try. And that seems to work fine again. It's a bit lumpy because the engine's cold, but I can rev it. So we definitely have an issue there. But let's get on to the fuel pump. So one more thing I'd like to point out. This is my filler cap and it failed a while back. It's um, the key just spins around, I can't open it. So what you do is you drill a little hole about, I don't know, say 20 millimeters from the center. I've got a little pocket screwdriver. I've actually drilled the hole in the sliding bit, bit underneath as well. But you don't really have to, you can deal with a sharp pick or something. Put some pressure on it so it opens easier just let it go so basically i'm trying to pry it open so you can see that tab there that holds your fuel cap closed and all i'm doing is trying to open that with the screwdriver rather than the cam the plastic cam annoyingly that's meant to do that when you twist the key and yes of course this happened right after i filled the fuel tank so i've got a lot of fuel to siphon out
and that's it. Fuel tanks filled up again. I used a 100 micron um, paint filter, and don't know if you can see it, but there is some something in there, so it was wor it was worth using. But I wanted to show you the the stuff I pulled out of the fuel tank. Look at that. Not only is it dirty, but you can see the change in color. So the bit on top is probably some sort of petrol, but the heavier stuff at the bottom, full of debris, that's probably just water, very dirty water. So yeah, it's worth uh, emptying your fuel tank every now and again. So the new fuel pump is in, let's see what we've achieved. It always helps if you remember to press record. So. I suppose I should end this video somehow. There was more to it. There was uh, more on the temperature sensor and also test ride with uh, comparing how, how it works with it plugged and unplugged. But sadly I, I lost that footage by accidentally pressing the delete button, but we shouldn't go there. Anyway, the bike runs fine with the temperature sensor unplugged when it's warm. When it's cold, it runs a bit better with it plugged in, but as soon as it warms up, you kind of feel you want to unplug it. So I, I guess the temperature sensor must be out of range or something. But uh, yeah, at this point, I no longer own that bike. I thought I was going to own that bike forever, or nearly forever, for as long as I can. Um, but things in life change, I suppose. And yeah, I, I sold it. I will regret it. I do miss it. Sort of. I wouldn't ride it much, but I, I'd like knowing it's here. But anyway, sometimes you have to make difficult choices in life, and that's fine. It's gone now. I'm sure there'll be others. And uh, yeah, hope this was a mildly interesting video, and you got something from it. It's been a lot of uh, talk and not enough interesting things happening, maybe. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.